Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is where you are. I'm Dia Smith-Taylor, and this is House Calls After Show. It's the show that we have after our live show with, uh, with doctors, and today also with survivors, uh, where we're talking about CHD today, and we'll explain to you what that is. But this is the time where we continue to answer your viewer questions that are left over from our live show. And I'm so happy today to have our guests back with us, um, both our doctors and um, our survivors. So let me have them come on the show and welcome them. And, uh, and we'll answer a few more of your questions. Um, all, thank you so much for coming back and joining us for this after show. Thanks for having us. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Um, and so we're going to get right into it. And so we're talking. So what I want you to do, um, even as before we move forward, I want to just have each of you introduce yourselves. So the audience is um, reacquainted with who we're talking to today. So I'll start with you, Dr. Romano. Hi, my name is Jennifer Romano. I'm the Herbert Sloan Collegiate Professor of Cardiac Surgery, and I'm a congenital heart surgeon at CS Mott Children's Hospital. And Dr. John. Hi, my name is Anitha John. I'm the medical director of the Washington Adult Congenital Heart Program at Children's National in Washington, D.C. Wonderful, Jessica, and then Rachel. Hi, I'm Jessica Cowan. I am the manager of research and advocacy at the Children's Heart Foundation, and I am also I am a CHD survivor. I had um, a transplant when I was 16 because of hypoplastic left heart syndrome, which I only have the right side of my heart developed. Hi, I'm Rachel Owens, and I am a congenital heart defect, two-time heart surgery survivor, and I am also a heart mom. Uh, my son was born with a congenital heart defect, and he's also, so far, a two-time open heart surgery survivor as well. Thanks so much, um, everyone. And ladies, uh, this is actually a great place to ask a question. Um, John from Chicago wants to know, um, and this really goes to our survivors, any good programs to connect adult CHD survivors with parents who have a child recently diagnosed and who need encouragement? I'll go first on that. There is an, a really amazing, if you're on Facebook, there's a really amazing group. Um, it's called Heart Moms, but there are, of course, heart families on there. So the dads join in as well. And it's heart moms and heart parents from all around the world. Um, and everybody just gather, gathers there. It's a pretty much open, safe space where you can ask questions, connect with other parents and survivors. And another um, option I would say is to go, if you're on Instagram, always you can look up hashtags uh, for CHD Warrior, CHD Moms. And there's uh, different pages like Conquering CHD. And you can find a lot of parents that are dealing with the same things and connect with them there as well. Wonderful. Um, you know, doctors, let me ask you this. Uh, go ahead and, and just define what CHD is for us again. We didn't do that in the beginning. So congenital heart disease, CHD, stands for any structural heart defect that you can be born with. So it's an abnormality in the development of the heart in utero that can result in an abnormality in the structure of the heart. Congenital meaning inborn and then heart defect, CHD. Thank you for that. And anyone can respond to this next question. Um, are there any myths uh, that, that families in particular have um, when a child is first diagnosed that, that you all want to address? I don't know if it's so much when a child is first diagnosed, but we certainly have seen uh, many adult patients who have come to us who were told that they were cured. So they had heart surgery as a child, uh, and was told that their heart defect was fixed. And the assumption at that point was that they did not need to maintain any follow-up uh, afterwards because whatever the defect was, was taken care of. In, in some cases that might be true, but more often than not, uh, you still have to maintain some follow-up with a specialized provider uh, to ensure that you don't have uh, complications that result from that congenital heart defect. So I and don't know if it's so much a myth or not, or not but it may be a, perhaps a misunderstanding. So is it true that once you have a heart problem, defect, et cetera, um, you always do? Yes. So that's something that I tell families, you know, even after a child's had heart surgery that's been successful and we've quote unquote fixed the underlying defect, 
all of these patients need to be followed for the rest of their life for ongoing medical needs and issues that may come up as they get older. And that's why having specialists like Dr. John, who really focus on adult congenital heart disease patients, understanding what they went through in childhood to better understand what their needs are going to be in adulthood is tremendously helpful. Thank you for that. Uh, Monica from YouTube wants to know, uh, what exactly is cardiac arrest? Cardiac arrest uh, is basically when your heart stops functioning to the point where you do not have enough uh, blood flow to keep you alive. Uh, so this can result from uh, a heart arrhythmia most commonly. So you might hear people getting shocked or defibrillated uh, during the uh, process of CPR. Um, but basically it's a process of the heart that um, uh, just doesn't allow for the uh, blood to be circulated in your body the way that you need to. Uh, and this is different than heart failure uh, where you still have enough to be able to stay alive. But when you have cardiac arrest, uh, the blood flow has stopped uh, so that you really don't have enough to keep functioning of your organs. I see. Um, Adil uh, from YouTube is 43 years old. He's a male and he wants to know about dialistic dysfunction type one. I hope I said that properly. And he wants to know, is that normal? He doesn't have any symptoms except for chest pain sometimes. Anyone? I think probably what he's maybe saying is diastolic dysfunction. I see. Okay. Uh, which is common. Uh, it, it's common in patients with congenital heart disease, especially if you've had surgery previously, but it also can happen as a normal process of aging. It can occur in patients who have uh, high blood pressure, who have diabetes, who have you know other heart issues. Uh, so I would say it's important for him to talk uh, to his doctor to you know sort of see what the underlying causes are for him. Um, but it doesn't, you know, necessarily mean that uh, it's going to progress, but it, it basically is an indication of the level of stiffness of the heart. Gotcha. Thank you so much. And, you know, I want to use this time to also say, you know, you all provided so much valuable information. And, you know, were there any burning questions or, or topics um, that you kind of just wanted to leave us with? Um, I'll start with the doctors. Just anything that maybe we didn't address on the show that you want to just um, make sure everyone is aware of. And then uh, we'll also have our survivors uh, share that as well. So I guess I would start by saying, one, just to always remember that a congenital heart defect is not necessarily a death sentence. The majority of patients who receive a diagnosis of congenital heart disease will go on and live well into adulthood. And so there's just so much potential hope and we continue to get better and better every day. But we also don't want to forget our heart angels, those kids who did lose their lives along the way to congenital heart disease. This still can be a very challenging diagnosis for families out there. And so just being aware of both of those that continue to survive and strive, but also those that we've lost along the way. Thank you so much. I would also say that, you know, it's really important for patients and their families to realize that they are not alone. Uh, I think many times folks feel that, you know, they are isolated. They don't really know other folks with um, defects, uh, congenital heart defects, uh, or folks who have gone through surgery uh, in their childhood years. Uh, so I would encourage folks to really reach out and uh, explore the various different advocacy organizations that were mentioned uh, in the program, Children's Heart Foundation, the Adult Congenital Heart Association, Conquering CHD, Mended Little Hearts. These are all organizations that are focused on uh, CHD patients, their families, and promoting research. Um, and to know you're not in a vacuum and you're not alone. Thank you so much, Dr. John. Um, Jessica, you got a little emotional um, during our live show, um, but we've all really felt your heart, um, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> anything else you wanna share from your heart today? I would say um, just because you feel good and um, you know, you're know you doing well, don't stop taking your medication. Um, that's a huge um, issue that ha I've heard along the way. Um, I learned to take my medication at five and I've never missed a dose. Um, so I think when heart patients are really feeling good, they automatically think, all right, I'm not going to take my medication anymore, but that's, that's the reason you're feeling good. Um, so keep taking your medication and yeah, the children's heart foundation, um, like Dr. Romano and Dr. John, um, and Rachel stated that 
you know, it, it's a great place for support. Obviously, we do research, but that's where my family found the most support. Um, there wasn't anything around. You know, I was I was 14 when the foundation when we got involved in the Children's Heart Foundation, and that was the only thing my mom knew um, to have that really nice support versus today where there is some great resources on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's just important to, you know, my, my doctors and I'm sure Dr. <laughs> Dr. John and Dr. Romano will back me on this. Um, keeping your heart healthy, working out, um, you know, eating the best you can doesn't mean you can't have sweets and all, all of that good stuff. But, um, yeah, you know, this journey has been, there is emotional components to it. And thinking back, like on your journey, there are those points where it just kind of gets you a little bit extra. And, um, I'm just, you know, I'm just happy to be able to share my story. I am too. I'm so glad you're here and really appreciate you sharing your story. And last but not least, Rachel. So I think back just to what the doctors have kind of already reiterated um, and also what we've all shared, but just how it's so important for me um, going from a CHD, a child with CHD into an adult with the congenital heart disease, making sure like when I was in college and I had that period where I'm, I'm from a small town, I went to college in a small town. And when I started having issues where I maybe couldn't walk here 20 feet away without different pains in my stomach or feeling com completely fatigued. And I was seeing doctors that weren't really well versed in my condition or knowing how to pinpoint what might be happening from a child um, going into adulthood. And for a few years, I spent time just where my condition was worsening because I wasn't getting that proper care. And I just want to Say to young adults, especially or transitioning, maybe going off to college by yourself, I wasn't really near family anymore. Just make sure that you are getting the proper care, seeing a doctor that um, knows about adult congenital heart disease and making sure that you don't waste time. There was a point where I was really close to not making it. So just making sure that as you transition during that period, become an advocate for yourself. Um, but also just make sure you're on top of everything, taking your medication, staying um, up to date with everything. When you're young, you kind of, you know, you want to enjoy life. You're in college, you're a teenager, and you kind of want to fit in and, you know, just be a part of that community. But make sure that you keep yourself first and be your best advocate. Awesome. That's great advice. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate um, you all just being so present and available and helpful today. Um, I'm your host, Dia Smith-Taylor. This is the after show. Um, and listen, I want to leave you on a wonderful high note and message from our survivor, Rachel, because in addition to it being Heart Month, it's also Black History Month. Um, so please join us again next Monday, same place and time, and, uh, and we'll see you there. Hi, my name is Rachel Owens, and I'm a Go Red for Women, Real Woman. My mission is to encourage minority women to take control of their health and to live fierce. This is especially important in the Black community because Black women are disproportionately affected by heart disease and stroke. My hope is that being a voice within my own community will help to fund research and participation. I aspire to be an innovator and a trailblazer like Daniel Hill Williams and Myra Adele Logan. My name is Rachel Owens and I make history every day. Learn more about house calls, real docs, real talk, and submit your questions at heart.org slash house calls.